So my department did all the ticketing for the players, all the hospitality, all the players' lounge, welcoming the guests, commercial appearances on match day, you know, non non squad activities, meeting fans, that kind of stuff, and also all the logistical stuff, hotels, you know, buses, all that on away games. Um, but then weirdly, in COVID times, I became the subs board guy. So I was doing like lifting the board up during the match and doing the subs, which was quite nerve wracking. The perception of player care is it's just like a player can just like click their finger at four in the morning for a sandwich and I'm going to come like running or driving or whatever to go and deliver it. It's it's really not like a concierge company. The way I look at it is if I moved to Senegal age 19, would I know how to get a car there? Would I know how the council tax works there? Would I know when the bins go out? No. So why would we expect someone from Senegal age 19 to come here and know how that works? You know, it's easier for us because we grew up in this country, we knew it's like, but if anyone who's lived in a different country will know, there's just weird nuances that kind of don't make sense sometimes, especially when it's another language that you maybe don't, don't understand. It really depends manager to manager. Some managers have been, you know, kind of like, you, you crack on, you do your bit, but I don't really want to know. Um, and some managers want my experience to talk about team bonding or um, team morale or team communication. And it, it really just depends on, on the manager and what, what they're A, used to and B, what they want and their style of management. I think one of the things that we try and do is do like a little buddy system where, you know, just say, look, can you show him where everything is? And it's, it's just trying to build those little relationships between two players and then that, you know, someone from inside the group will get brought into the into the core group. I don't think you'd see any squad that would be everyone in one group, and no, I don't think you'd really want that either. Before COVID, it was a little bit different. So my department did all the, the ticketing for the players, all the hospitality, all the players' lounge, welcoming the guests, commercial appearances on match day, you know, non non squad activities, meeting fans, that kind of stuff, and also all the logistical stuff, hotels you know, buses, all that on away games. The way I see it though, is it's kind of once we arrive at the stadium an hour and a half before the game, not my job stops, but like it's a bit of a break for me because they're not going to be like at half time, like, oh, I need my council tax, you know, can you check on that? It's, if they weren't, if, if I'm needed during the game, there's a massive, massive problem. So I kind of just make sure stay out of the way, you know, help with any logistical stuff, support my fellow staff members. Um, but then weirdly in COVID times, I became the subs board guy. So I was doing like lifting the board up during the match and doing the subs, which was quite nerve wracking. So it kind of, everything that's needed and, and I think really I see the player care as, as kind of that that glue between everything. It's probably harder if I know them in real life because I have less patience for them whereas I have like a real fondness for some of the players that kind of kept came through the game um, and like have been great for me whereas most of the players in real life have not really done much for me so I kind of like if it's a you know I don't know if one of the players in real, that I know work with in real life is kicking off in the game I tend to be a lot less sympathetic when I was still at Southampton I would play and then a player would kick off and I'd send that player a screenshot of them kicking off in the game and being like can you just sign your new contract it's kind of a bit of a laugh and a lot of the lads either play the game or know of it so it's kind of a nice little conversation piece my first club that I worked full time was a club called Indy 11 in the what was then the NASL and now is that they're in the USL in America. And when I arrived, we had one player and the manager and then that was it. That was a whole squad. And the one thing that kind of felt very football manager -y to me was we signed a veteran World Cup winning player to play for us and kind of be our star of the team. And I think Anyone who's played football manager has always had a, like a, a cheeky look at the unattached or the expired, you know, players and see who can I bring in to rekindle their, their glory years. We were scouting, um, you know, in, in leagues where kind of there wasn't a lot of people scouting to try and find these gems. And actually some of our best players came from Honduras that year. It just felt re really football manager. I could almost see like the screen coming up and the different icons and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, really, really cool experience. I remember having that conversation with Miles about, you know, there was so much negativity about players not coming out and there have been no one coming out. I said it would be really nice to have a, a sort of Easter egg kind of feature where someone came out and it was really positive and, then, you know, shirt sales went up and there was a lot of interest and, and you know, a player maybe played better, was more settled after he kind of was able to be his true self. And actually, to my surprise, Miles was like, 
I love it. Let's do it. No, I think every every now and then it goes viral on Twitter or social media, and then I'm like, oh yeah, that's nice. I, you know, a very small part of that, and hopefully it makes you know some small difference to someone out there playing the game.